So, okay, I want to make sure, so this would be like a quartic function, right? I want to make sure that whatever happens with the fourth derivative of my true function, that should be the same as what happens with my approximation function, the fourth derivative of my fourth uh, of my um, approximation function at the point x equals zero. So let's actually differentiate this again. So the fourth derivative and then stick in x equals zero. Well, the fourth derivative of my function, my true function this is, is just going to basically be the derivative of that, which hopefully you can see is just going to be 16 e to the 2x. Now, if I stick in x equals zero, I get 16 e to the power of two times zero, which is going to be 16, okay? And then let's come over and see what happens with my fourth derivative of my approximation function. So the fourth derivative of my approximation function. Okay, well, that thing there is just a constant. It's going to disappear. So therefore, my next term is going to be four times three times two. Remember, that power is one, so I need to bring it down, times one times c4, okay? And hopefully you can see that when I stick in x equals zero to this, so g4 of zero, this term will remain, so I get 4 factorial times by c4, but every other term will all go to 0, okay? So therefore, the fourth derivative of my function at the point x equals 0 will just be 4 factorial times c4. So let's come back and let's plug that back into our approximation. So now I know then, over here, now I know over here then, that the fourth derivative of my function, the fourth derivative of my approximation function, at the point x equals zero, I've just worked out is going to be four factorial times c4. Hopefully you're noticing a pattern here. So if I want this approximation to be any good, I want that thing to be the same as that thing. In other words, the fourth derivative of my approximation function at the point x equals zero should be the same as the fourth derivative of my true function at the point x equals zero. So in other words, I can say that four factorial times by c4 should be the same as 16. Well, after a bit of rearranging, you can see that c4 should be equal to 16 divided by 4 factorial, okay? Just remember where that came from. That's effectively saying that c4 is equal to the fourth root of my function around the point x equals 0 divided by, you guessed it, 4 factorial. Now, let's just quickly work out what this is equal to. So let's come over to our calculator and let's go. Well, what's 16 divided by 4 factorial? Okay, so 16 divided by 4 factorial comes back as 2 thirds. So as I know, this thing here is going to be equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so that is the next term in my function. Okay, so so far what I've got is that my approximation function, so if I start off with f equals x, f of x equals e to the power of 2x, and I want to approximate it around x equals 0. Okay, then I can say that this should be approximately equal to, so my approximation function, which I'm just calling g of x, okay, should be equal to, well at the moment I've got 1, that's my first constant, okay, that's my first constant, 1. Then my second constant is 2, so it's going to be 2 times x. Then my third constant is going to be 2, so it's going to be 2 times x squared. Then my third constant is going to be 4 thirds, so it's going to be 4 thirds times x cubed. Then the next constant, which I've just worked out, is going to be 2 thirds times x to the power 4. Okay. Now, in actual fact, this is going to carry on forever and ever and ever like this. Okay. So I can keep going in the same way. I'm going to stop here, but I am just going to come to GeoGebra and see what this thing looks like. So in other words, the fifth approximation function I have got as, well, it's going to be the same as what I had before. So 1 plus 2x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 thirds of x cubed okay but now i've got an extra term which is two thirds that's my next constant times x to the power of four okay so that thing in green that thing in green is the best approximation that i've got so far and you can see that it's a pretty good approximation okay so everything between maybe here which is about negative i don't know 0 0.6 0 0.7 right the way up to about here which is about 0.9 Okay, that's a pretty good approximation of e to the power of 2x, but remember I've started at x equals 0. Okay, I've started at x equals 0. Now clearly, if I carry on going in the same way, so over and over and over again, I'm just considering more and more terms, then what's going to happen is I'm just going to get a better approximation of e to the power of 2x. And eventually, the idea is, if I consider an infinite number of terms, so carry on the same way forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, then it should be that this approximation function, this polynomial, should exactly match what's happening with my true function. So e to the power of 2x, okay? So let's just generalize then. What's actually happening here? Well, if I have a function, so f of x, and I want to approximate it as a polynomial around, let's just stick with x equals zero for the time being, 
Okay, so x equals zero. We'll talk in a minute just how we can change this to a different value. Then I can basically say that f of x, okay, should be approximately equal to, well remember, this is the general form, so c naught plus c1 times x, plus c2 times x squared, plus c3 times x cubed, etc, 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 okay? And so on and so on and so on forever, okay? Now the way which I work out that c naught, c1, c2, c3, way which I work out that constant, remember? Well, I've done it up here. OK, so C naught I worked out by just sticking in X equals zero into the true value to the true function. OK, so in other words, e to the power of 2x. So I just do that by sticking it into the true function. Remember, F is the true function. So I stick in X equals zero into the true function and that should give me C naught. So in other words, C naught here is just F of zero. So whatever happens if I stick in X equals zero into the true value of my function. How do I work out C1? OK, remember, I worked out C1 by simply saying that should be the same as the gradient function at the point x equals zero. So in other words, the first derivative of my true function and stick in x equals zero. OK, so f dash of zero. OK, then how do I work out C2? Well, I worked out C2 by taking the second derivative of my true function, sticking in x equals zero, but then dividing it by two factorial. And you remember where that two factorial came from? It was simply just through differentiation of my um, of my approximation function, okay? So f double dash, so the second derivative of my function around the point x equals zero, divided by, you guessed it, two factorial, okay? And how did I work out c3? Well, I worked out c3 by taking the third derivative of my true function, sticking in x equals zero, and then dividing by three factorial. OK, so I basically said that there is going to be equal to the third derivative of my function, stick in x equals zero, divide by three factorial. How do I work out C4? Well, hopefully you can see the pattern here. This is going to just be the fourth derivative of my function, stick in x equals zero, then divide by four factorial. OK, so the fourth derivative of my function, stick in x equals zero, divided by four factorial. So in general, then, what is the nth term of my function going to be? So what is the nth term of my approximation function going to be? Well, hopefully you notice the pattern, right? Hopefully you notice the pattern. Effectively, to work out the nth term, it's just going to be the nth derivative of my true function, stick in x equals zero, then divide by n factorial. And then that's going to be the x nth term, okay? So times by x n. So if I want to work out any term in this series, I can do so by doing this. So if you like, I can write this using sigma notation. So sigma notation just simply means sum all terms together. So I just simply take the nth derivative of my function, stick in x equals zero, divide by n factorial, and then times that by x to the power of whatever n I'm looking at, okay? Where n goes from, well, in this case, we've got to start at zero. Okay, because if you think about it, the zeroth derivative to my function is just a constant. Okay, and I can go up to infinity. Okay, so that there is the is the series Taylor series there. Okay. Now this is fine. So this is the Taylor series for um, for any function in general. Okay, but what if I didn't want to do it around x equals zero? What if I didn't want to do it around x equals zero? What if I wanted to do it instead around the point x equals a? So what if I wanted to approximate f of x, not around x equals 0, but around x equals a, okay? Well, I can think about this in a very particular way, okay? If I just have a look at what I had up here. So if I just had a look, I said that f of x around x equals 0. So maybe if I write this over here, so around x equals 0, Okay, the way which I do that is f of x should be equal to f of, and then I stick in x equals zero. Okay, so this is literally what f of zero means. It means stick in x equals zero. Okay, and then here you can see, here you can see that to get the next derivative, okay, I'm just simply plugging in f dash of x equals zero times by x. Okay, then the next one, and so on and so on. So in other words, I can rewrite these terms. I can rewrite these terms. Instead of just writing f of zero, I'm just writing x equals zero. Okay, so that's all I'm doing here. This will be tied about two factorial times by x squared, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, now if I want to change this to be around x equals a, which is what I'm after, now hopefully you remember from transformations of graphs that if I change a function, 
So in other words, so instead of saying that my function starts at x equals zero, okay, if I want to move it so that it starts at x equals a, in other words, let's say we move it to the right, okay? So I'm just literally just moving my function along so it starts around a different value, okay? If you like, when I did my GeoGebra function, instead of starting around x equals zero, so this is my approximation function, let's clear my other ones. If I want to start this, if I want to start this function around a different point, say for example x equals 1, okay, then what I want to do is move this point here, this point here, okay, over to here. Okay, so I literally just want to move the point over. So that in turn moves the entire graph over. Okay? So if you like, it's a transformation to the right by a. Well, the way which I do that, okay, so if I start off with f of x, if I want to move it so that it is now centered around a, so I want to move it to the right by a, then I can change that by changing it to x minus a. Okay, so hopefully you remember from your transformations of graphs, I'm just changing x to x minus a, and this corresponds to a translation of a units to uh, in the other direction. So if it's negative a, it must be a translation of positive a to the right. Okay, so all I need to do then, all I need to do is replace x equals a into my function, which I had before. So if this is the approximation function around x equals zero, all I need to do is change x to x minus a. Okay, so I need to change x to x minus a, and that will then be the approximation of my function around the point x equals a, which is what I'm after. So here we go. So I've got f of x is going to be equal to f of, well, I'm going to change x now, this x here, to x minus a. Okay, so it's going to be x minus a equals zero okay and if i look at the next one it's going to be the first derivative of my function around the point i'm changing x remember to x minus a so it's going to be x minus a equals zero but remember i've also got to change this x to x minus a because i'm changing all the x's to x minus a so it'll be x minus a here make sure you put it in a bracket okay then if i do the next one appreciate i'm running out of space a little bit it's going to be the second derivative of my function change the x to x minus a so it's going to be x minus a equals zero all divided by 2 factorial and again remember to change that x to x minus a and in fact if I just carry the pattern on the next term is going to be the third derivative of my function around the point x minus a equals 0 all divided by 3 factorial then change the x to x minus a like I did before and so on and so on and so on now I can tidy this up just a little bit I can tidy this up just a little bit so I can say then f of x is going to be equal to well if I tidy that thing up in there x minus a equals 0 add a to both sides of that equation, I just get f of a, okay? And likewise, the first derivative, if I add a to both sides of the equation, I get f dash of a, and I still got times by x minus a. Now, if I add this next one, so f second derivative of a, all divided by uh, two factorial, okay? So x equals a is just simply say, basically saying stick it in a function, so it's just the same as f of a, right? Or f dash of a, times by x minus a all squared, and so on, and so on, and so on. So in other words, if I want to write this as a, as a series, okay, I can write this as a series if I say n equals 0 up to infinity of, same thing as before, the nth derivative, but this time I'm going to stick in a to my nth derivative because that's literally what my formula says. That's literally how I've transformed it. Okay, Still going to divide by n factorial. The only thing that's going to change here is instead of having x to the n, I'm just going to have x minus a to the n. Okay, x minus a to the n. So in general, this is going to be the Taylor series around any point, around x equals a. You notice this will also generalize to x equals zero. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that gives you an intuitive understanding of how the Taylor series actually works.